God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the expression of the Father's love. I'm happy that you are able to join with me this morning. May the Lord grant you peace, love. And you must know today that in the midst of all that you are, is happening in your life, you must have this assurance that God loves you. And that is taken from his word. He really do love you. And so in spite of how you may be treated, in spite of what you may be going through, there is a God above who still loves you. And his plan is that you do not perish, but that you would experience this everlasting life. I want to thank you today for tuning in. And for a text, I'm going to look at the book of John chapter 14, reading from verses 4 through verse 6. John chapter 14 from verse 4 through verse 6. And this is what the text has to say. And whither I go, he know. And the way he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, I want to pray today. God, I'm praying that through these words, that the Holy Spirit would minister to every viewer today. Convict, convince, and convert. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every heart will be open. I come against every plot and plan of the enemy to distract and to hinder this word from taking root in the hearts of the hearers. So, oh God, move by your spirit. This I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I want to speak on the subject, the indispensable Savior. What do I mean? I'm talking about a Savior. We absolutely can't do without. Apart from Him, nobody else can save you. And this very text speaks to this. It was an occasion. Jesus knew that His hour has come. That He will have to go back to the Father. The hour came where he had to die for the sins of humanity. Where he's going to pay the ultimate price. He's speaking to his disciples at this moment. And he's telling them they don't need to be troubled regarding his going away. Because he says to them, that he's going to prepare a place for them. And that he will come again. And that he would receive them unto himself. That where he is, there they shall be also. Following this text, the Bible tells us that he made a profound statement in verse 4 saying, and whither I go, you know. And the way, you know. And then Thomas said unto him, Lord, shush, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? I know there are many people who are asking the very same question, Lord. We don't know where you have gone. And how can we know the way? How can we know the way to this place that you are talking about? How can we know the way to the place that you are going to prepare for us? How? The answer to these questions is in the very text. And this is how Jesus responds 
responded to Thomas. In verse 6 he says, I am the way. You want to know the way to heaven? You want to know the way to Almighty God? You want to know the way to eternal life? I am speaking about the indispensable Savior died for our sins and prepared a way for all of us. And there is no hallelujah other way. But Jesus declared that I am the way. He is the only way. I know many people think that there are many ways to God. I know many people have tried many other methods. I know many people have discovered new things and new ideas and new philosophies. But this ultimate truth is a reality. Jesus opened his mouth and he says to his disciples and his followers, if you want to get to heaven, if you want to go to the Father, I am the way. In saying this, Jesus is disqualifying any other way. By the use of the definite article, he declared, I am the way, not a way. So people, hallelujah, if you are listening to this, you don't have any other option. Jesus is the way, the only way. He is not declaring to his disciples, I am a way to God. He is saying, I am the way. And if you have tried any other way to the Father, you are off course. If you have heard about any other way than Jesus, you are absolutely off course. Because He is the only Savior of the world. It is only Him. And by Him, we are saved. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1 and verse 29, when G John saw Jesus, he says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was identified as the Lamb of God. The one that will be made a sacrifice for sins. The one who will die for the sins of humanity. The one by whom we will receive redemption. In the old covenant, they brought a lamb to sacrifice for the sins of the people. Hallelujah. But there has come the time, there came a time when Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice for sins, laid down his life for us. And through him and by him we are saved. He is the only dispensable savior. You want to know how salvation comes? He is the only way. Peter in the book of Acts. The fourth chapter and the twelfth verse. Says there is no other name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. If you have searched high and you have searched low and that you think that you have found this way that you can receive eternal salvation apart from Jesus, somebody lied to you. Somebody bewitched you. There is no other Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the world. I don't care how bright they are. I don't care who convinced you otherwise. There is no other way but Jesus he is the only way he is the one who paid the price for our sins he is the one who bled on the cross for us he is the one who died hallelujah by him and only by him we have redemption hallelujah 
In the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2, the writer tells us, and he, speaking about Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but for the sins of the whole world. He is the one whom the Father is well pleased with. He is the one who was sent by Almighty God. When Jesus told Nicodemus, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten Son. I want to tell you today there are not many begotten son but Jesus is the only begotten son of God the relationship we share with Jesus the father no other share that kind of relationship and by him and through him we have redemption Peter conclude there is no other name I don't care what you have heard I don't care who told you otherwise there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved he is the only savior his name is jesus his name is jesus he is the only savior of the world without apology there is no other way to god than through him not by your own effort not by your own means not by what people have told you I am here to announce to you that Jesus is the only way to God that was a very informative information and now that you have heard it there is no argument regarding who is the Savior there is no argument in terms of the direction to Almighty God. The writer in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The grace of God came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And I want to let you know there are not many routes to God. There are about one root, and that root is through Jesus Christ. That's why Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord you must understand this is how the grace of God comes it comes through Jesus Christ he is the means he is the way he is the only way Jesus declared I am the way Thomas I am the way Thomas hallelujah and he not only declared to Adam, to Thomas, I am the way, but he also declared that I am the truth. Hear the phrase, the truth, the absolute truth. He is the embodiment of truth, and what he speaks, he speaks truth. He's not there to fool anybody. He's not here to mislead anybody. He's speaking the truth. He cannot lie and will not lie. He's the almighty God, manifested in flesh. And hear what the text says. Thomas, what I'm telling you is the absolute truth, and I am truth. The absolute truth. Now some people will say that truth is relative, but I'm here to tell you the truth regarding Jesus is absolute. He is the only way, and he is the embodiment of truth. And Pilate asked Jesus before he crucified him, what is truth? The wrong question, who is? And he was staring truth right in the very face. And did not recognize it. And Jesus saying to the disciples, I am the way. And he is the truth, the absolute truth. And thirdly, he says, I am life. The life. Not a life. The life. The only person you can get eternal life from. And through. You want this everlasting life? 
You want to receive this gift of eternal life that God is offering? It comes through Jesus. It's packaging Him. You receive Him, you receive life. You reject Him, you reject life. I am glad today to speak about the indispensable Savior. The one who is the only way. The one who is the absolute truth. And the one who absolutely and truly gives life. Because in him is life. The Bible tells us that Jesus told his disciples and those who were following him. That he who comes to him, he will in no wise cast aside. He will in no wise refuse. I want to let you know that Jesus wants not to just give us life. But he wants to give us the abundant life. It's available to all. That's why the text John 3.16 is so profound. Because it says, whoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. You will possess it on the basis that you believe that Jesus is the only way. You will possess it on the basis that you believe that Jesus is the absolute truth. You will possess it on the basis that you believe that Jesus offers life and offers this eternal life. And whoever believeth in him will not perish will not be exposed to eternal misery and pain. This is a promise from the lips of Jesus. This is a promise from Jesus, the indispensable Savior. That whoever comes to him, he will never reject or refuse. He's offering this life as a gift to humanity. The question is, will you receive it or will you reject it? Jesus concludes this very text by saying, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't access God on your own. You can't access God by a friend. You can't access God through your knowledge. You got to accept God by faith through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is very clear here. If you come to the Father apart from Jesus, He will not hear you. He sent his son to die for us. And it's through him and by him he will hear us. He will forgive us. And he will accept us. So the access to God is Jesus. That's why it's so important to believe in him. It is critical that you accept him. Because if you don't, you are rejected by Almighty God. Because Jesus says, no man cometh to God. But by me. Speaking of himself. And I want to share this to you today. Because many people believe that they can access God by good works. They can access God because they're in a particular religion. Because they have done no evil. But I want to say to you today, 
You can access God by the things you do. You can't be acceptable by, to God because of where you grew up and what religion you grew up in. Every one of us must come to terms and believe in Jesus Christ for themselves to be accepted with the Father. I know you know what I'm saying is so. But for some reason, you have not made up your mind to come through him because of your present lifestyle. Because for some reason, you have not just you have not yet made that decision to commit your life to him. To somebody who's listening right now, you are without excuse. God has already demonstrated his love for you and for the whole world. He has allowed you to hear the message again and again and again. Every time you hear the message, he is appealing to you to accept Jesus. He is appealing to you to believe in Jesus. Because he wants to save you. There is nobody else that can. There is nothing else that can. Jesus is the indispensable Savior. It's necessary, absolutely necessary, that you believe in him in order to be saved. I want to ask you at this time to bow your head and close your eyes. You believe in a lot of things, but you have not yet believed in Jesus. Because if you did, you would have been saved. If you did, you would have committed your life to Jesus. The fact that you have not yet done that, demonstrate that you do not believe. He's calling for your whole heart, your whole soul, and your whole mind. Some people want to partially serve Jesus. Some people want to straddle the fence. Some people want to put it off until they have accomplished every other thing in their life. Whether it's marriage, their own home, their career, enough money, and they have lived a full life. And when they think that they are going to die, now they will give the rest of their life to Jesus. The only guarantee we have today is the very moment before you. I want to ask you today to seriously consider serving Jesus. To seriously consider giving your life to him. He paid the price for you so that you do not perish. With your head bowed and your eyes closed. I want to ask you. Why not commit your life to him right now? Why not put your faith in him right now? And allow him to do the changes in your life. With your head bowed and your eyes closed. Say, dear Lord. I have lived a sinful life. And I'm sorry. I said things I should not have said. I have done things I should not have done. And I repent of them. And I ask right now that you forgive me. I believe that Jesus is the only way. I believe that Jesus is the truth. I believe Jesus is the life. And that no man cometh unto the Father but by him. 
I believe in him right now. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Please accept me now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're prayer, that prayer, you're saved. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church in your area and go there. I want to encourage you to get a Bible and read it. It speaks about the life of Jesus and all that Jesus and God have done to lead us to Him. Read it. And as you read it, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand what you're reading. I want to ask you today to tell somebody of the decision you have made. And make this a lifetime commitment. And I pray and trust that when He comes, that you will go with Him. With every head bow and every eye closed, maybe your sick in body. I pray, oh God, that whatever sickness is plaguing your body, I pray, oh God, for relief, for healing, for miracles, for those who be will believe. So by faith, reach out to me right now. Say, I agree. And I receive that healing in my body, regardless of what you are plagued with, regardless of what is affecting your health right now. Claim this healing by faith. I declare the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. Receive your healing now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. It was a pleasure for me to share this short word with you. And my prayer is that God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and that God will be gracious to you and grant you his perfect peace. To you and your family, enjoy the rest of the day. And may your heart be filled with joy overflowing from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in to the expression of the Father's love. Until next time, God bless you and keep you. God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace amen so until next time may god bless you have a wonderful day in jesus name amen and amen <laughs>